In a past example, we declared an array of 500 integers using this line of code. And when we did this, really, we were combining two separate statements, the declaration and the instantiation, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Uh, really, we could have written it using two lines like this, uh, int abc, notice we have the brackets to denote that we're declaring an array, and uh, abc equals new int uh, 500 elements long. The key idea here is that arrays are objects, and we have to instantiate them before we use them. We can declare several different array variables in a single statement, just like this right up at the top, where we declare both ABC and XYZ. And then look, we instantiate them separately, though. Or we could write it like this, int array ABC equals new int 500, XYZ equals new int 10. They're both being declared as integer arrays. Either of these will work. Array variables are null before they're assigned array objects. Now, if we don't assign an array object, we can actually get a null pointer exception, just like we're working with the, uh, the instances of a class like we looked at earlier in our course. So as an example, here if I have an int array variable called abc, I've declared it, but I haven't instantiated it to anything. If I try to index into the array and access element 1 uh, and say element 1 equals 10, well, I'm going to get a null pointer exception because I never actually instantiated the array to begin with. Now, because arrays are objects, two variables can refer to the same array, as we see in this picture, where ABC and XYZ both refer to the same array of integers of length 5. And just like when we were working with objects and references to uh, normal objects as we had seen them before, when we change uh, something about an array using one of the references to it, we end up seeing those effects even when we access it through another array variable that points to the same object. So here we can see we instantiate an array of five integers. XYZ and ABC both refer to the same one, and changing XYZ changes ABC as well. Here, we end up displaying 100. Note, this also means that if we have an array and we end up with nothing pointing to it, there are no array variables pointing to it, it's going to get garbage collected. It's an object. So suppose we wanted ABC and XYZ to refer to two separate arrays that happen to contain the same values. Well, we just copy all the elements from one array into the other. And this is how we do it. Uh, we declare our two int arrays, ABC and XYZ, and we have a counter I, which starts at zero. We instantiate one of them, ABC. Now remember, initially, everything gets initialized to zero if it's an int array. But we're going to loop through it from zero until the length of ABC, and we're going to initialize every element of the array to I squared. Well, then if we instantiate XYZ to a new array, we can go through and just copy XYZ, each element from array ABC. So now we've made two identical but distinct arrays. Now there's actually another way to declare and instantiate and initialize an array all in one step. We do that using an initializer list. So the syntax looks like this, int bracket bracket ABC equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the curlies with a semicolon at the end. And now ABC refers to a valid array of five integers. So this is another, another way for us to do all of that in one step, declaring and instantiating it and initializing it. Now notice, despite the fact that there's no new keyword here, we are instantiating a brand new array. Now, as I said at the start, uh, arrays can be formed from any collection of similar items, anything. Okay, so uh, here we can see examples of arrays of doubles, of characters, of booleans, of strings, of student objects even. You can see we have uh, DDD for doubles, characters, booleans, yep, just as we said. And we can access a particular element in the array and set it to whatever we'd like. Notice here, we're setting the fifth element in array SSS, that's our student array, to a brand new student object. That means we don't actually have necessarily a student variable pointing to it, but we can still do all the normal things we'd be able to do with the variable name using the, uh, the subscript from the array. So we can access that student object as SSS sub five. SSS sub five dot set name, bill, is a valid call to the setter. And if we were to get the name and a substring from this array of strings, GGG, well, we'd end up with Bill sat on the mat. Okay, there's one more way to declare array variables, but it's confusing and strange, and I implore you not to do it. But I'd like you to recognize what it is. Uh, you can see it here. 
we say int abc array. So, so abc is an array variable that's going to reference an array of integers. Okay, no, you remember in the in the previous examples, we would have int array, we'd have the uh, square brackets with the array right here, int array abc. So here the difference is that the array brackets are going on to the variable name abc. Now, this is a little bit strange because here we're saying uh, int aaa array bbb ccc array. Well, aaa and ccc are both array variables. bbb though is just a regular int. This is weird. This is a little confusing. I would suggest that instead you work with your arrays and your variables as demonstrated here, the standard way which, we see, which we've seen so far, where we declare an int array, AA and CCC, and separately we would declare a, a single int primitive if we wanted to use it. Now one last important point about instantiating arrays. Once you instantiate an array, you can't change its size. You cannot change its size. So you have to make sure that the array is large enough for whatever you want to use it for right from the outset. We'll later learn some data structures that allow us to get around this uh, by using something other than an array, but something that behaves somewhat differently. But for now, just understand arrays are statically sized. You cannot change how big they are. Okay, before you close up shop, a couple things you want to be able to, uh, to, to tell me. You want to be able to declare and instantiate array variables given a type and a length. So what type of thing do you want to put in this array and how many slots do you want to have? Uh, make sure you can use an initializer list. That was uh, what we saw in the curlies, where you declare and instantiate and initialize all at once. Think about how you translate between an initializer list and a regular declaration and instantiation followed by initializing using a loop. All right, so think about how you would translate between two equivalent sets of expressions to do those things. And last, in that weird example, in that weird example that we saw where we had a uh, the type and then the variable and then the, the square brackets after the variable name rather than after the type. Explain to me why it's better to use this first version uh, where you're specifying that it's an int array rather than doing it like this. Last thing not written here, make sure you remember arrays are statically sized. Arrays cannot change their size once you instantiate them. That's a really important point. That's it for today.